Coach joins us from Columbia. Coach, congratulations. Uh, I know it's a long way to go before the end, but uh, my oh my, uh, are your fans fired up right now? Good afternoon. Uh, appreciate that, Paul. It's great to be on. Thanks for having me and and uh, really happy for our fans. They deserve it. It's been uh, we've had a good run here and Saturday night was an awesome night here in Columbia and uh, really excited uh, for our fan base to be able to to finally win a game in that series against Texas A&M. And, and you're right, we got a lot of work to do and a long ways, long ways to go. But that was a uh, that was a big step Saturday night. Well, you only have two of the top five programs in the country remaining, and you've already played the number one team. Not that scheduling says scheduling really matters, uh, but but I think it was easy, uh, and we're all guilty of it. Well, all of us that talk for a living. To watching your your first couple of games, I mean, you're on the road at Arkansas, you you play Georgia at home, and, and you started to wonder uh, what's what's other than the fact that uh, Georgia has moved on. What has changed from your perspective? Because this team looks different than than it did earlier in the season. Yeah, uh, I'll be the first to admit we did not perform well in those two games early in the season and, and give Arkansas and, and Georgia credit. I mean, they, they played really well those two days and, and we did not. And, and I think the biggest thing for us is one, we we've gotten healthier, uh, not to make excuses, but we had a lot of guys out uh, early in the season with injuries. They they've gotten healthier uh, and we've gotten, we've gotten a little bit more experience. Um, and we were, st we started two true freshmen, on defense against Arkansas and then Georgia as well. And those guys, DQ Smith and Nick Eamon Worry, they continue to get better uh, having played uh, as true freshmen. Uh, and then I think overall, we've just gotten better as a football team. We talk all the time around here, Paul, about just let's get better this week and, and really try and improve as a team. And and they practice really, really hard. They practice really, really well. And we've gotten better each and every week. I felt like we got better as a football team after the Kentucky game during the off week and then last week as well. And it's going to be critical for us to continue to do that here the rest of the season. I know sometimes uh, drive-by fans you know, spend a lot of attention on the end of a game because that's sometimes what people see. But I don't remember ever seeing a beginning of a game quite like the one Saturday night. I just take us through how how you watched uh, some of the first few minutes when when it seemed like everything uh, happened and it was all good for you. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a wild start. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it, this, the the electricity in that stadium uh, was unbelievable on Saturday night, and, and I've been a part of some really big games here in Columbia when I was an assistant coach and and that that environment Saturday night was really special started with our walk when the team arrived to the stadium two hours before the game and pregame warm-ups and then it was uh it was uh, really 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 at a high level when we came out of the tunnel to 2001 and to be able to get off to a start like we did by returning the kickoff uh, a crowd or a fan base and a crowd that was already uh uh, really excited, went to a, 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 an even higher frenzy after that. And then to be able to get a turnover on defense uh, right after that, then another one right after that. I mean, it was, you couldn't have started any better from, from that standpoint. The crowd was already into it and, and they were a weapon for us Saturday night in that game. And, and certainly they impacted A&M and, and the way that we started the game had a long ways to go. We didn't play great throughout the, throughout the entire night. We got to play better, but we were able to get off to such a good start that it, that it helped us as the night went on. Coach, I realize you're still a young guy, but I was worried about you on that opening kickoff. I mean, you you were uh, you were uh, you were about to outrun the re the, the return guy. Uh, that was something to watch. Just seeing you afterwards. Yeah, uh, you know, we uh, that was a, that was an awesome moment. Love seeing our players uh, have success, and and um, what a great individual effort by Xavier Leggett and our kickoff return team. And I mean, it's amazing. His uh, his his shoe came off during the return, Paul, and he still was able to break those tackles and and run with with only one shoe uh, great effort great blocking and and uh, really really uh, exciting moment happy for him and and you know like I said love seeing our guys have success I know so much of, of coaching is is making sure your team calms down and 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 gets back to work uh, it's cliche and we all roll our eyes uh, when we hear guys like you say that but how do you uh, get this team moving forward because fans are still talking about Saturday night and you have a game straight ahead. 
Yeah, no, it'll be a challenge and it'll test the maturity of our team this week. There's no question about it. We 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 had an off week between Kentucky and Texas A&M where we could come back down to earth a little bit. We don't have that this week and and watching tape on Missouri uh, yesterday and, and throughout the day, they certainly have our respect and physical in the line of scrimmage and, and a lot of weapons at the receiver position. I mean, they're a talented team and, and every game with them has been a, a close game here in the SEC throughout the season. And we all watched the game against Georgia earlier in the year. So we got a big challenge uh, this week. And and for our guys, one, we've got to rely on our leadership. We've got a lot of good senior leaders that, that uh, uh, they're we've had a lot of firsts this season in regards to beating Kentucky for the first time in a while, beating Texas A&M for the first time ever, winning four straight, being ranked. So there's a lot of good things going on right now, but uh, I don't think anybody, I know nobody in this program is, is satisfied with where we are right now. And in our mindset, it's what's next. And what's next is the opportunity to go uh, compete against a really good Missouri team on Saturday and continue to try and get better as a football team. Coach, the, the, we, we showed the ranking a minute ago, and you know, for some fan bases, that's standard fare. It's not at, at South Carolina. What does it mean to, to be in that top 25? Yeah, it's, you know, I could give you coach speak and tell you it doesn't mean anything, <laughs> and, and I'd be lying to you. I mean, I think it's just a, sta it's a, it's a sign that we're headed in the right direction, and it was a, a big step for us to, to be a, to, to, to a two-win team two years ago, and then in year one to win a bowl game, and now in year two uh, to be nationally ranked halfway through the season is a good step for our program, but it's not the not the end goal. I didn't come here to just be 25th in the country, and our players didn't come here just to be ranked in the top 25. We all have higher expectations than that. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.